Growing Sounds is a series of cross-curricular workshops mixing science and engineering with music and physical theatre. <laughs> Today the team are visiting St Xavier's and St Olaf's School in London. By the end of the day, having explored aspects of physics, drama, music and biology, the Year 7s will get the opportunity to make their own musical instruments but they'll have to build them out of fruit and veg. First, the students are going to need to understand a little about the physics of sound and how it travels. So Steve begins with a demonstration of waves, starting with one which everyone knows. Who do you know how to do a Mexican wave? Let's start with you. Go, 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 good. Now faster, much faster, much, much faster. Faster still, much, much, much faster. Faster, 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 quick, 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 quick. That's a special kind of wave called a, a, a transverse wave, okay? Because it's going up and down. Just like the sort of waves that we see in the sea, that's different to sound waves because sound waves are a pressure wave. And they don't go up and down like that. They go backwards and forwards. I have a background in teaching science using mime, the physical theatre, um, and so what I was trying to do then was both um, use those theatre techniques to um, break the ice, as it were, get the children warmed up, but also to get them thinking about some of the science that would be then be building on through, throughout the day. I'm going to send a vibration around the circle. We were looking at properties of materials, we were thinking about how sound propagates, we were looking at particles and interaction between different particles. Steve also explores how sound travels through gases, liquids and solids. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send the same sound wave, the same vibration through the solid now. Let's have a look. Are you ready for this? Straight elbows. Brilliant. OK. Oh! I don't know if you noticed, but it went dum 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 dum. It got to here, and then it went dum 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 dum. We got an echo. That was brilliant. Let's see if we can do it this way. We're trying to get as much acoustics and, and physical um, science into the work um, and get them going so that they're ready for the next uh, session. Okay, fantastic. Now, did that vibration travel faster or slower than the, when we were doing it walking around as a gas in space? Faster, brilliant. I haven't come across a, a science subject that you can't explore using physical theatre. Um. Steve's final challenge to the students is to use their own bodies to hey. physically model the inner workings of a musical instrument. <laughs> so, okay, Lucy, you've got a clarinet. Talk, talk me through it. What, what are the different parts? Uh, she's the person blowing into the, the reeds. Okay. And she flaps. Yeah. Flap. Okay. Then she, yeah, she passes the. Uh, the air into the tube. Right, so the air's now vibrating. And it's going through the tube to the person and out of it. Fantastic, okay. Oh, that's great. Big round of applause for this group. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you very much. It's kind of a trick whereby in music lessons you can get very good engagement through doing things practically. And people are starting to do it in other disciplines, in other subjects. And it really, really works. We do it, then we reflect on it afterwards, and that's how it sticks, because they actually have ownership of what they've done. In my part of uh, the session, uh, obviously we're using music. Music is the key uh, creative force there. But uh, it's not just music, it's, it's sharing the, uh, a universal idea with, with the young people that rhythm is at the centre of life. <laughs> I play an array of instruments, uh, of very unusual instruments most of which are an extension of ideas developed in Africa, you know, in sort of rural communities where people make music out of anything they find. You go beyond the instrument, like why, why does this sound like this, you know, stuff like scooping a calabash out, a gourd out and cutting it in half and, you know, it sounds like a drum. What did 
drummers come in. Shakers come in. Drummers come in. Through Eugene's introduction to a whole new world of percussion, the students are able to see how even the most unusual of objects can be used to make music. But before the girls get the chance to begin making their own instruments, it's Ray's turn to introduce them to some plant science. On your tables, you've got a worksheet. Spend some time in your groups, starting to answer some of the questions on the worksheet. Once they've had time to have a look at the, the fruit and vegetables that they have in front of them, describe them. What colour is this? Orange, yellow. I like this because it just looks like a tree. Talk about textures, structures. Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's like a coconut. <laughs> that's a coconut. Yeah, but this one's hairy. And in particular, where they think they come from and whether they think they're a fruit or a vegetable. Yo, you got the tomato. You got the decision. <laughs> or your vegetable. Isn't it? I hate tomatoes completely. It's so rude. It's rude. It's rude. Then we moved on today to just revise the parts of plants and then to get into a discussion about these these fruits and vegetables and, and where did they come from on the plant? But you think it might hang off of the tree because it's got a stalk? Yeah. Okay, but that's a good, that's a good reason. Yeah. You've got a reason for what you're suggesting. So you're good. And uh, eventually trying to, to tease out what is a fruit, what is a vegetable. What's going on here is that we're actually using two different ways of classifying things. Yeah? The difference is with a fruit you're saying it's a particular part of the plant. With a vegetable, you're saying that's just the way that we use it. So we can take any part of the plant, which might be a leaf, it might be a fruit, it might be the stem, it might be the root, and we cook it up, we use it as a vegetable. In the past, with a bit more time, we've, we've gone off in the direction of talking about why plants are important to us. We've gone off in the direction of talking about genetic variation. Or we've got into healthy heating. Why, do, why eat five? fruit and vegetables a day, why different colours. So there's lots of ways that you can go with it. Finally, it's time for the girls to get those creative juices flowing. We're going to make a musical instrument out of your fruit or vegetable. In design and technology, it's very important that you have you're able to be creative and uh, use materials imaginatively. I thought the, the idea of musical instruments made out of vegetables and fruit um, captured the kids' imaginations and it really got them engaged and involved in, in, the, in the lesson. He didn't really actually model anything. He didn't say you could take a cucumber and you could do this. And I was stood there and I was thinking, are they going to do this? Can they actually create these instruments? And of course, within an hour, they'd all got something that could make a sound. It's the culmination of everything that's gone before it. They're obviously going to incorporate what they've learnt through the, the creative um, approach to learning Last about science and about Brilliant. acoustics. They're going to incorporate what they've learnt from making rhythms and compositions on, with everybody, Eugene. Everybody. And they're going to build on that, what they've learnt about the plant anatomy. They've been thinking about the actual type of material that some of these uh, um, fruit and vegetable are made of. I cut off the 
friends, look after their friends, and I use the Eugene used the drill. I mean, he drilled a big hole so the so the sound can come through. And these are for the notes, so I can use different notes. Too. I made some clack clappers out of coconuts. It's a voodoo, and when you bang that bit, I think noise yeah noise comes out. Noise comes out of this bit. I made um. I blow horn out of a cucumber and I put grapes in to make a design, two different colours and I stuffed it with a melon to make more noise. <laughs> We never cease to, to, to keep being astounded by what children come up with. We've seen um, butternut squashes hollowed out with pieces of celery fibre stretched across them to make guitars. There was one child once who took a courgette and cut it part way through lengthways and then just sort of flapped the two pieces together to make a kind of primitive clapper. There's, there's just no end of what, what children are able to come up with if you just let them run off with their imaginations. Ray, Steve and Eugene believe a large part of the success of the project lies in creating a truly cross-curricular experience. But do the girls agree? It like mixed different kind of topics together like science and music and that was really interesting. I learned that sound and, um, sound and music and science are all incorporated with each other because without science we wouldn't really have music because it's about learning how molecules travel. My favourite part was making the instruments because it was really creative and like you learnt that you can make instruments out of just about everything. I used to prefer music to science but now that they merged the two together it seems more interesting and fun and I've seen a different side of science today. I can see a few contenders there, a few contenders coming up. Yep. We're not treating the curriculum in a linear fashion but in fact if you look, if you mapped out all the curriculum um, attainment targets that we covered over the day we've covered an enormous amount and I think that's what's most, most important because actually creating teaching this creatively saves time <laughs> one of the things that we would normally do that uh, we really didn't get the time to do today is actually hand over the leadership over to teachers so that by the time we're winding up, by the time we're finishing it, actually we're not leading the workshop. We're, we're, we're allowing the teachers to take it away from us because that is one of the main aims is to say, look, you can do this. This is not something that has to be done exactly the way that we do it. The school can take two or three elements where they have got the resources and the teachers to do it and they can run with that and they can modify it, they can add extra things in which perhaps we haven't thought of. <laughs> to play a broccoli trumpet is a soul enriching experience to be honest which I think will stay with me forever and I shall treasure that moment. Thank you. Hi.